Hey guys, I'm Joel. If you haven't seen my previous video, make sure you go back and check that out because you're gonna be extremely lost if you don't. For all of you that have seen it, I've been thinking, I've been thinking hard and long about my choices and what I could do. Because obviously there is a solution, but the big thing that I'm working around is how much money do I wanna spend. I could go out and get some new pistons for my 84 and a half millimeter block, the block that originally came out of this car. I could overbore that block half a millimeter, use the Eagle rods, use the new pistons that I buy, and we'd be good. I think the pistons are probably like around $900. That is an option, but then I'd have to do all the machine work to that block. I called the machine shop to get the engine overboard half a millimeter and to do the line hone on the crank because I want to use the ARP main studs instead of the original bolts. Whenever you use ARP hardware, it clamps down harder than the stock bolts, so you have to do that. Now I could do stock bolts, but that just wouldn't be smart because the point of this would be to not cheap out, so I would have to use the ARP hardware. They said $700 to do the half mil overbore and line hone. So I'd be paying 900 for pistons plus another seven just for the bottom end, all because I got a good deal on the Eagle rods. Now is that really a good deal if I'm going out and spending so much money on top of it? I don't know. Because personally what I say is don't go through the snowball. I don't want to go through the snowball of I might as well while I'm here do this, do this, do this because then the car is just going to be sitting here for a year and it's never going to be out because it takes a lot of money once the snowball goes. Picture the snowball just taking money out of your wallet. The bigger the snowball, the less money you have in your wallet. <laughs> so now that brings me to the point. Now the only time that it's gonna make sense for me to do this whole forged bottom end is if I can make it all work in this block that it came in. Now, I'm not the one to judge that, so I'm gonna bring it to the machine shop, have them measure out the bores, make sure everything is good, measure the piston to wall clearance, if everything checks out at the machine shop and I can reuse these pistons and I can reuse this block, now this is where it gets fun. Because <laughs> remember in the last video I said this is all supposed to be fun? There is a possibility that there's enough material on top of the pistons to actually have him put these in the bridge port and mill down the top of the pistons to lower compression down a little bit. I'm praying. So now all of these things have to be a thing. There has to be enough material here for him to grind this down and the block has to be good so if the piston is machinable and there's enough material to be safe with it in there then that is going to take care of my compression issues because these pistons are 10.8 to 1 compression ratio and i do not want to run compression that high on a turbo engine normally you use the copper spacer to lower down compression a little bit but it's too small so i wouldn't have to use the copper spacer if i get those machined now only if all of those things check out which sounds like they have the same odds of me hitting the lottery because there's no way all this stuff is just gonna be in working order and this is all gonna work out for me <laughs> i'm just putting that out there right now i would be able to sell this 84 and a half millimeter gasket and get an 86 millimeter gasket and just have a cut ring head gasket no spacer lower compression forged rods forged pistons everything is going to be nice and dandy but again only if it checks out so that's enough talking. Let me take this crank out so I can go bring this to the machine shop. It's Friday. I don't want to bring it last minute. I just want <laughs> let's get to work. I pray this doesn't have too much torque. Wow. Holy shit. It looks like the M50 block has a little C-clip to hold the timing chain guide on. Whereas my M52 doesn't. It's just the normal clip on. I 
can take this little creek scraper off. Oh, it's literally just a piece of steel. What? That's main bearing number one. Main bearing number two. Main bearing number three. Bearing number four. Damn, that one's good. Main bearing number five. Damn, that thrust bearing came out easy. They all look pretty good though. That is not good. What the fuck, yo? Damn it. So stupid, yo. It's too hot for this shit, and I'm over here dropping crank caps. <laughs> it looks decent. Whatever, dude. I don't care anymore. Ah! Yeah, there's no chance I'm leaving this crank standing up. What, dude? Actually, it stands good. <laughs> I just need to not kick it over. For those of you interested, that is what the bearings look like. I'm good to go to the machine shop now. It's a lot lighter. I'm going to throw it in the back, bring all the pistons. You know the deal. I'm coming in now and putting some tape on the rods just so that I can know 100% after they come back from the machine shop, they are where they are. Here we are. I'm also going to bring this just so that he sees the exact type of head gasket I'm working with. And I'll probably bring this just so he can see the copper spacer and know what I was talking about. The package is secured. Hopefully it's safe. But look at this. Pardon the dust. 100 degrees this car's been on for like 10 minutes that's obnoxious i made it to the machine shop he measured the pistons and it turns out that they're 86.4 millimeter bore the pistons are s52 pistons that's exactly what i thought because i was reading a little high i did not think there were s50 at the 86 millimeter they are actually s52 millimeter and now he's gonna just run the dial board in real quick. He said that the block checks out and everything looks good. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick and show you it's about 1,000th play within it. So he said that that block is good to go. The gauge is in there. And he's running it up and down the cylinders and you can see that it's about 1,000th play. From top to bottom, from all six, so. He's just running it up and down, trying to measure it all the way across the whole cylinder. And everything checks out. So I might be running this engine. This is very complicated now. <laughs> From the zero to the one, one thousandths of an inch. Every one of them within one thousandths of an inch. That's perfect. That's amazing to see. I really did not, I don't know why I didn't have hope, but that's good to see. Thank you. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way that he just said this block is in very good condition and that I need to find a head gasket to lower the compression and send it. <laughs> what? So I guess we're going to have a boosted S52 now. <laughs> what? Dude, this is crazy because S52s love to make way too much power. This thing is not gonna make a little bit of power. <laughs> While I was editing, I was also noticing that there's so much blown out material between every cylinder, and that's when the head gasket blew up because of that. So look at how bad that looks. The machinist said that this was due to detonation. So detonation was what caused two engines to blow up, mine and this one. But this one was just a head gasket. So he said, get some sandpaper and a block and sand it all down until it's smooth, hose it down, get it all good. 
and clean and put it all back together. He said the bearings were good too and that I could even, if I really wanted to, I could just reuse them, even the rings, which that's kind of crazy, I don't know. Or is it actually that crazy? I'm not sure, I don't. I couldn't find my feeler gauge to see if the block was actually perfectly flat. Normally you come in with a straight edge and a feeler gauge and then you try and set it up across the engine like this and then stick the feeler gauge under the straight edge and see what size feeler gauge can go through. And I can't see light through it, which normally that's like the best indication of showing that it's warped. So I think that this block is perfectly fine. There's no warp in this. So I think if I just clean it up a little bit, it would be ready for a head gasket. Also, I need an 87 millimeter head gasket, not 86. And another note, he was measuring the pistons at the bottom of the skirts. That's where you're supposed to measure them. I was measuring up here. That's not where you're supposed to do it. Don't measure from up here. It's from down here. I didn't know that. <laughs> we got some news. I don't even know where to start. All right, so basically, since the block is measuring good and everything came out to actually be pretty good, I'm gonna be using this bottom end. Now, the next thing that I gotta do is take care of the top of the block. And it matters and it's very important depending the type of head gasket that you use. If you use an MLS head gasket, you need to make sure that the block is perfectly flat and basically like a mirror finish. It needs to be very precise for the MLS head gasket to actually work. They call for a 50 RA surface roughness. We're DIY guys, we don't know what that is. 50 RA, that's machine shop talk. It needs to be like a mirror. Now that's one of those things that a lot of opinions vary. Some people say, I've had good luck if I just roll lock wheel the whole block and send it. And some people are like, no, you can't do that. Now that brings me to the point. The machinist told me just to get a block and sand it down like that. But if I go MLS, I need to make sure that it's very precise. But I was looking here and I saw the 84 millimeter cut ring head gasket and the ring that comes with it sits perfectly in the cylinder bore. I don't feel any overlap and it fits literally perfect. And that makes sense because on this block, the ring is a little big on there. You can see it. Put the edge up right there and look at how much block material. So they purposely make them big for that reason. Now if I grab this whole assembly with the copper spacer and I drop that ring in there, now you can see where the problem arises. You can see a little bit of copper and the copper is what's actually the 84 and a half millimeter. I'm, I can feel that groove right there. So I have a feeling if I just get another copper spacer for the 87 millimeter and use the exact 84 millimeter gasket that I have, since I bought this one for the 84 millimeter block, I would still be able to use this one, I just need to get another copper spacer. So I think that's probably the most logical one to do. But I could also run an MLS head gasket and sell this one. So I don't know. I don't know if people run forged engines with the copper spacer. I don't see why that would be an issue if it was the right size. Lastly, some people were concerned that maybe the bearings were oversized bearings and maybe the mach crank got machined. And that's a very good point. I have no idea what size these bearings are. Now, I'm not one that likes to reuse bearings or anything, but they look pretty good. And I kind of just like the fact that this whole block was $300 and there's a possibility that I could just put it entirely back together exactly how it came and make a lot of jam on it. I love that idea. I don't know why, but I feel like if it actually produces a lot of power and I just gap these rings, this could be actually crazy. <laughs> I'm not into it much, so it doesn't really, I don't feel very, you know, like I have to do everything perfectly, but I also don't want to total my engine. So, you know, there's that. All in all, there is a solution. I'm gonna get this done and we're gonna be on the road soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more because I'm gonna be rebuilding this engine soon. Any and all input is welcome down below. Please help me with this because this is kind of complicated now. There's so many options and you know, you guys help me weigh my options so very much. Follow me on Instagram right here at E30Joel if you wanna stay up to date with everything that I'm doing. And yeah, thank you for watching.